Hi friends, I hope you're doing really well. And as promised, finally this week, we are gonna jump right into lesson three of our book, The Fallacy Detective. It's a fun book, it's written really for, you know, uh, probably middle school age kids, I would imagine. But we, I thought it would be really fun to go through it because as I was with my daughter, what we were finding is that, um, what we were finding, <laughs> excuse me, sorry for that. What we were finding is that a lot of the ways in which we learn how to challenge diet culture was found in this book. Like what the things I often do with clients, I'm like, we need to talk about this because you can use that not just for recovery, but you can use it for lots of areas of your life. So opposing viewpoints is chapter three. And what it kind of jumps into a bit, so we're gonna talk about the chapter a smidge, like a couple of sentences, and then just talk about how that relates to us, you know, and the work we do here. So, you know, when we first come to this work, a lot of times we only do it because we feel desperate, right? It's like we're sick of the obsession. Um, we're overwhelmed. We know that, like, um, let's say dieting, if it, you know, people tell you your whole life that it's supposed to work, and if you just try hard enough, you'll be successful. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be maybe working for for you. Or it feels like if, you know, you ate a certain amount of food and got to um, enjoy a certain amount that there would be less pain or whatever it is that our struggle is, right? But we're kind of forced to do this work, you know, to look at um, the viewpoints, whether they're in our own head or whether they're outside of us to like, well, what's the truth? And do I not even have enough data or information to decide, am I going to restrict? Am I going to binge? Am I going to just jump in and burn the bridge and not look back from what's behind me and just kind of do this process? And a lot of times where we get a little stuck is I'm just going to read here from here in a little bit is that sometimes we don't honestly evaluate all sides of the situation and, and not, we don't study it for ourselves. And that's partially because of our conditioning, right? We are, we've all been brainwashed to think that thinner is better and Weight, weight, gaining weight is terrible. And if you don't eat a certain way, you're going to like die of some horrible disease, right? That's just the conditioning of our culture. And nobody questions that because the, if you hear it from people around you so much, honestly, without critical thinking and evaluation, you start to think it's true. Now it's really hard. And that's why they're teaching kids this information now, which is so awesome, how to be critical thinkers instead of just like, um, what authorities say is automatically true. Now, this is not meaning that children should be obviously disrespectful of people who are trying to like help them and raise them, but it's okay to ask questions. It's, it, that's normal and good. And you shouldn't be getting in trouble for like, hey, well, how does that work? And, and where did that come from? And tell me more about that. That's okay. We should be doing that. So it also talks about um, having more information. So this is many counselors. So when we want to make a decision about something, it's often good to ask for advice. Um, you know, and get, get different points of view and then kind of put that together. Like, well, what makes sense in my situation? I don't want to be obsessive. Okay. And I told them about my obsessive thinking about, let's say a food or uh, food rules or something. And they gave me this feedback about like what it sounds like, what it might mean, what's the function of that. And then you make a decision of, well, what way of navigating this, um, thinking pattern is the best way. Do I just need to like not listen to any of those thoughts and get grounded first? Do I need to just say no to it? What works best for me? And it's really important that like the more you think about the situation you're in and you get some information about how this might be, you know, three or four different viewpoints of what might be helpful. And then like we want to be able to take this from here and then be in here. What makes sense for your situation? Okay. Let's see if there's anything else here. Um, what this also helps us do is to be flexible in our thinking and being willing to like change things. Like I, you have to like, when you think about like the health at every size research, you know, we recognize that all research is limited and we do see that like, um, you know, people don't maintain weight loss without disordered eating habits. You know, that's, that's in the literature, but like how to manage health concerns without trying to lose weight is a, is a different story. And that's very varied. And you, so you have to look at, different maybe viewpoints as well as how to accomplish what you want to. So there's a lot to think about. Um, 
So no one has to try to evaluate every viewpoint on every issue. Um, it's just more about having an inquiry mind. Instead of automatically thinking eating more food is bad for you, it's like, well, what would be the harm in that? And how true are the thoughts or feelings that come up with questioning that, for example? That's, that's how we do it. So I guess that's it for right now. I just want to share that one. That one's a little easier one because next week we're going to dive into um, one of my favorite topics and one that I do a ton with clients is looking at red herrings. All right. So a red herring is basically is we are making, here's a problem, and we are basically projecting it on something else and making that the problem when it's not really. So in our work, that's very common to do like the body's the problem, right? And I say, nope, the body's not the problem, never has been the problem, never will be. It's maybe the, the environment you were raised in that was harmful that was the problem. Or, or um, maybe our agreement with that because we don't feel good enough, so we want something to make us feel less prone to criticism, whatever it is. But the body's not the problem. We are just looking for something because this is really painful and maybe we don't know how, how the skills need some support to be able to navigate actually solving the real problem, right? So we're gonna talk about that. That's That was one of my favorites, of course, and made my daughter excited because I was so excited, but um, it'll be fun to talk about next week. So I hope you enjoyed all the videos. So we did our logic stuff to this today and then we had two really important videos this week about the lies around restriction, and the lies about binging. And I hope you enjoyed those two videos as well. And I will see you all um, next week. And if you need anything or if you have any topics that you would like to see me cover, please do. I know I thought of something today around um, avoidance of criticism. I think that's a really very, very important topic to what drives so many people's um, ups and downs, you know, in recovery uh, or even prevents them from even starting. So um, anyway, there's lots of things to to think about. So I want you to think about any situations that you're facing um, that you'd like to hear some more nuance about. I'm happy to do it. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in next week's videos. Bye for now.